Chris the Bergeron zone. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Um, one of the things that somebody might not think about is what, what's called special care. What it is is memory care. If somebody in your family is a little forgetful, look at that. Don't bury your head in the sand. Um, you may need more support. If you move into senior living where they don't have memory program, somebody could really withdraw from the surrounding of independent living or even regular assisted living because it's too much for them to cope with. And if they withdraw, they're not getting that stimulation. The stimulation is important. If you need special care, you need memory care, really take a look at that and try not to just say, well, they're a little forgetful. Think about it because you could really get a benefit out of that. Um, cost of assisted living, Patty is going to have a, a lot to say about that with the veterans' benefit. If you come in at independent living, you can get a, a low end of about $3,600 a month. And now here's the interesting thing with us. That's an inclusive price. It includes all your meals. It includes all the activities. It, it includes the lifeline. If you want assisted living for $500 more, it's an inclusive price. Um, it will get you in at around 4000 a month. We can go up into the 5000 range if you want the larger apartments. And it's just a matter of looking and seeing what is available. Um, one of the things to keep in mind is with a lot of the for-profits, they'll have added levels of care that add above and beyond. With us as a nonprofit, we give you one base price based on what kind of apartment size you have. Patty's going to tell you how, how you could possibly pay for this. Just a couple, just, just a couple of comments. F first of all, r remember, inevitably when I'm talking to folks about assisted living and they hear these numbers, they go, God, that's so much money. But remember, when you get there, a whole bunch of your other bills have gone away, right? You're not buying your food, chances are. You're probably not going to, out to eat as much because you don't feel like cooking, because that's actually down the hall that you can get your meal. Um, a lot of the tr your trip expense, a lot of that has really gone down. Now, that said, you saw the numbers on Frank and Mary. They couldn't do this, right? They couldn't do this unless they were dipping into their savings, right? Now, it may still work for them because when they look at how much they would be dipping into their savings on the low end of the units that he was talking about, they'd be dipping in their savings at the rate of about $1,000 a month or $1,500 a month or about twelve to eighteen thousand dollars a year and remember they had savings of about three hundred thousand dollars so at that rate they can be in assisted living for a long time right but the it, it as i mentioned at the beginning for most people who don't want to be drawing down their savings at that rate right this doesn't work for them unless they can get the veterans benefit but many people are unaware of that and that's why i really want to have patty talk to you about the the, the kind of major veterans benefit that deals with this issue Patty Surveys. My name is Patty Surveys. I'm a VA accredited agent, which does not mean I work for the VA. I don't. Very similar to being a CPA, that doesn't mean that you work for the IRS. And also very similar to the tax accounting um, analogy, you can get assistance with your VA benefits for absolutely free. There's veteran services officers. We have a great one right here in Framingham, Peter Harvell. He can help you with this. Of course, um, Department of um, I mean, uh, disabled American veterans, all those folks. My company, um, we help people for a fee with cash flow analysis. So if somebody were um, looking to find out, geez, when I'm looking at my financials, am I going to be eligible for group adult foster care? Am I going to be eligible for low-income housing tax credit? Those sort of things, we go through that analysis with them. Um, working with us independently, it's a one-time fee of $800, and then we assist you with your VA benefit pro bono for the remainder of your life. We also have um, a situation where folks assisted livings advertise on our website and folks who are going to those assisted livings have free access to our services absolutely no charge 
Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is 80% of um, residents in assisted living and really of people over age 65 are veterans or surviving spouses of veterans. However, a much lower percentage actually take advantage of this benefit because they don't know about it. How many folks in the room do we have that are veterans or surviving spouses of veterans? Well, a veteran, oh, I'm going to do that next. So you have to, have, for this benefit, you have to have served during a period of war. So even those of you, pardon me? No, I'm going to get to the next page. So even if you aren't a veteran or surviving spouse of a veteran, you do know somebody who is, who probably doesn't know about this benefit. And now you can tell them, hey, you should look into this. The, to call us, your first phone call is free. And as we always like to say, if you don't qualify today, because you're too healthy or too wealthy, don't be sad because who wants to be sicker or poorer? But you definitely should know about this in your retirement toolbox. Okay, the benefit we're gonna be talking about and the only benefit that I'm an expert in is the VA's basic pension with aid and attendance. And it was established by the VA in the early 1950s. So this is not a new program. It's not slated to go anywhere. It's a tax-free benefit. And it's basically for veterans who served at least one day during a period of war, at least 90 days in total, and were other than dishonorably discharged, who now need the assistance of another person. Does that include the reserve? Only if you were called up active. So you have to have been called up active under federal Title 10. All right, so the amount of money you can get under this benefit is quite large. A surviving spouse can get up to 1,113, a single veteran up to 1732 a month, a veteran with a spouse up to $2,054 a month, and a well veteran with an ill spouse up to $1,360 a month. So as you can imagine, for them to be handing out these large amounts of money, there's going to be quite a few criteria. So the first one is you have to be a wartime veteran. So what that means, you have to have served at least one day during a period of war and have been other than dishonorably discharged. That's important, you know, because people are like, oh, I was medically discharged or, ooh, I had a bad conduct discharge. Lots of times bad conduct discharges can be overturned because what was bad conduct in the 1940s might not be bad conduct today, right? Take our female Navy veterans who maybe got discharged for being pregnant and not being married can't keep them from their benefits for that today. So here are your periods of war. This one, very important, World War II. Everybody knows it started December 7th, 1941, but if you ask most people, they'd tell you it ended December 31st, 1945. Not for this benefit, it ended in 46. The year of peacekeeping in Japan and in Germany counts as World War II service. So I've actually given speeches and had a person in the audience learn for the first time that they were a World War II veteran. They were there to hear about uh, benefits for their older brother. Korean War, June 27, 1950 through January 31st, 55, and the rest of them are there too. Minimum of 90 days for our Persian Gulf War veterans, that's changed to two years. Okay, so who's a surviving spouse? Somebody who was married to a veteran who met that criteria, the service criteria, at the time of his death. Okay, that means you cannot have been divorced from him. If you were divorced from him at the time of your, his death, you're his ex-wife or ex-husband, and um, this is not the benefit for you. Okay, other VA benefits may still cover you, but not this one. So what if a parent, uh, person was married to a veteran, he died, and she remarried a non-veteran or the person she remarried she ended up divorcing. If that second marriage ended prior to November 1st, 1990, she can go back to her first husband's marriage, you know, his benefits. And I like to point that out just to let you know, this is complicated. Please do not tell a friend of yours, hey, you don't qualify. Let them make the free phone call, find out from the people who spend all their time doing this, okay? Medical requirement. You must, so it's kind of a stair-step thing. You have to pass each step, right? You have to have served period of active duty, or you have to be married to your husband at the time of his death, and he served active duty in a period of war. And then you get to the part where, well, do you meet the medical need? You have to need the assistance of another person, okay? And the VA doesn't care who the person is, right? Lots of times they're, oh no, she doesn't get any help. 
She doesn't, but you told me she can't shower herself, you know, she needs reminders to take her medication. Well, I do that. And I get to inform the people, like, apparently I'm the first one. Well, guess what? You're a person. And it's the assistance of another person. Doesn't matter if it's the son, the daughter, person at the assisted living. A person is a person. Yep. Spouse is okay. This is a really a medical thing, kind of like do you have diabetes? Do you have um, a heart condition? It's not, you know, limited to what particular person. So then if you meet the, med the military criteria and you meet the medical criteria, then it's a financial test to see if you're going to get the money. And it's a two-pronged financial test. It's an income test and an asset test. So if I were to ask you guys what's income, you would say social security, my pension, um, interest, dividends, oil well royalties, income from my second home. <laughs> they're very common. And you know where they're really common is like Montana and Wyoming. And because I'm the oil well rec expert, they always get referred to me. I think I'm the expert in the nation on oil well royalties and farm royalties. <laughs> farm income. So any type of income you can think of, I'm going to tell you it counts. Okay, so this is the most important thing you're going to learn today. That is not income for VA purposes, okay? It's just not. So if anybody from the VA says, what's your income? It is important that you remember what I'm about to tell you. Okay, income for VA purposes is income minus regularly occurring unreimbursed medical expenses as long as you meet the criteria for aid and attendance. Anybody understood what I just said? Of course not, because it's crazy, right? I like to say, you know why they call it regularly occurring unreimbursed medical expenses? Because they couldn't think of a way to say it that had more syllables, right? How could you possibly? What it means is medical expenses that nobody else is going to reimburse you for, like an insurance company or your children, okay? And a medical expense, if you meet the criteria we just went through, assisted living is a medical expense. 